Okay. Hello everyone. Happy New Year 2022. Welcome to the first Jenkins Infra Open Source Weekly Team Meeting. So today we have Hervé, Stéphane, Mark and Tim. And hi. Uh, let's get started with announcements. So this week we have the weekly release, like every week. Um, I saw that the Docker image, Debian package were available one hour earlier, uh, but the job was waiting for the usual Windows MSI synchronization. I don't know if it failed or succeeded. So it was, it failed on a, some, it spent a hundred minutes waiting for pkg.origin.jenkins.io to respond to an SSH call. And so I stopped it and restarted it. Okay. It, it's, I, I see nothing wrong other than it, something, some, for some reason, pkg.origin.jenkins.io, the same machine that received several other things through SSH didn't respond to this Windows request. And so it's running again. Okay. And I made a note of that in the, uh, in the Jenkins dash release IRC channel for reference. Ah, oh, sorry. No, 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 no need. It's just. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, second announcement, Hervé uh, has been granted administration right on the GitHub organization. So it has been requested uh, three weeks ago on the mailing list. Um, he had to sign the, the CLA that has been done. So unless I miss something, everything is okay. So I took the opportunity so we can uh, work on uh, managing all the repository on helping, helping on boarding Stefan and uh, other newcomers. So just a round of table, is it okay? Or is, the, is there anything that I missed or that you don't, you want us to cut his access? No, it's fine. The only thing is, generally, you don't need it too much because the infra team is normally admin on pretty much all the repositories anyway. Exactly. Uh, it doesn't change a lot, except now he's able to manage GitHub app and team organization secrets. So that could be pretty useful. OK, I don't have any other announcement. Are there other announcements around there? OK, let's go uh, ahead. Um, step one. So, team, it's your subject. GitHub issues for infra. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I've kind of briefly mentioned it a couple of times over IRC in the last week. Um, so, we just switched the hosting process over uh, completely to GitHub issues, and that um, seems to be going quite nicely. Um, uh, let me see. I created a test repo for the infra project. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, ho the hosting one is a really good one to have a look at. If you just go to the repository permission updater, mm -hmm. you can see what you can do with it now. No, uh, it's on Jenkins CA. No, it's not. It's, but it's just not called what you think. So just type repository. So, sorry, can you repeat it? Type know. repository. Yeah, that one. Okay, permission, okay. <laughs> And if you click issues and new issue. Oh, I'm not logged in. <laughs> I am. Okay, new issue. Hosting request, the top one. Um, so you can define, so this is all defined as code and you can easily change it however you want. Um, Nice. It's not a lot nicer than Jira because Jira is very limited to who can change it. And even as someone who has access, it's pretty horrible changing it. Um, it's so hard to find your way around and and make waiting for it to resync and everything. And like, yeah, even having the access, it's ho horrible to change. Um, whereas here, you can change it as easily as you want. Um, okay, so... I just sent a link in the chat to... The one that I made as an example of what could be used if people did want to move. Um, so it's in the Zoom chat. Yeah, you've got it there. Yep. <clears throat> I've added a note. 
And so you can add things like FAQ entries in there for common issues. Um, cool. So and so I created two Sorry, templates. Good. I created two templates there, one for a specific common task, which was GitHub permissions um, with some specific fields on that. Cool. Tim, Damien, could you go back to the new issue? So on community forum, that just opens community.jenkins.io. So it encourages yeah. people to ask questions there rather than posting a GitHub issue to, to use it as a question. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. That's brilliant. That's so cool. So I assume that there will be configuration. The, yeah, and, and then there's a issue of one I created, which was... I think generally based off the um, issue, uh, the infra project, what it has set up at the moment, but with a bit of text, um, a bit of special text. That's so cool. So if you just, I haven't created any on this repo, but if you just go new issue and just create a general one. Yeah, yeah, Damien, that's, I wanted to see the, okay, so it's, the it, the general issue is even that is a form is that right so yeah it is yeah oh that's nice so avoiding at least in motivating people please give us enough information to duplicate it and please a numbered list really we need to know the steps you took yeah yeah so i mean so yeah i mean the general Jenkins ci one has got no so Jenkins ci one's got more fields and stuff which has really made things a lot better for the Jenkins ci github issues the issues that I've been getting recently have been a lot better. Um, and it, even things like environment for Jenkins CI issues being collapsed since it's, it's all working really nice. Um, but in, I think infra generally needs a bit less information um, depending on what it is. Um, so cool. So I've already kept them. Uh, yeah, so it's set to create a label with triage. It kind of depends on how you'd want to work, whether you want everyone to re review an issue and move it somewhere. Um, I was planning to probably do, if, if people wanted it, to do some sort of auto labeling based on the service yeah. that's picked from the drop down. So if you click a service, and then. I don't remember if, if it's you uh, who, who listed some example of uh, GitHub Action. Which could uh, re um, reference uh, similar issues directly um, as a comment. Yeah, I think Gavin posted that in Getter. Yeah, um, yeah where it will uh, ingest all your issues into Algolia um, and then post a comment. It's not quite as good as the um, it has Jira's plugin for it, um, but yeah, you can do that. Um, so the thing I was looking at here was uh, adding a service and then adding something which will automatically add a label off of that, um, which would then um, have some configuration for who wants to get notified for what labels. It's one thing where GitHub is lacking is that you know, there's no fine grained subscription service. People have to build their own. Um, but yeah, and I added a bit of text near the top saying, this is for the infrastructure infrastructure on the Jenkins project. Moving out of the general issues to Jenkins IO should hopefully help with those issues anyway, because as everyone's saying, you get a number of issues that have nothing to do with Jenkins Infra in there, um, but kind of just reinforcing it still. So, so Tim, we could use this kind of technique for Jenkins, www.jenkins.io issue reports that come in through, we could use these kind of forms there as well. Can they be yeah. filled? Can they take data from a parameter in the URL? Yep, they can do. So you set, but so if Damien brings up the YAML file again, yep, any of them. Uh, if you click edit, unfortunately, it doesn't render the YAML. <laughs> it's that's nice, which is great, but uh, not what we wanted. Yep. Yeah. So on there, basically, each field there's an array of entries. If you set an ID um, on on that then that will, that can be auto-filled from the URL. Um, so if Damien just goes back, if you click issues and then new issue, uh, new issue. Yeah, 
I had the Zoom pop-up, sorry. Ah, no, and if you just click the top one again, you'll see in the URL bar, there's some field, some parameters. So those oh. are built, those are built-in parameters. But if you set IDs, um, so you set IDs on any of your fields, then you can pre-fill pre them with that, yeah. So, and um, URL equals blah. Yeah, yeah, CI, you can say, oh, yeah, you could do that. And you can auto fill, yeah, you can auto fill the service with that sort of thing. If you'd, if you'd set the ID, because there's no ID set on them at the moment. Mm. I didn't catch that one. Is it the ID? It's, it's in the YAML config. You need to set an ID for each field. And okay. they're not. Sure. But yeah, so, so basically Mark's talking about how there's a report and issue link, which includes like the URL. Um, so he wants to automatically have it. Um, so I think currently we pre-populate a whole body. Um, it's not, it's pretty nasty, nasty. Um, but this means that you can just put the actual URL in without having to pre-populate a lot of stuff. Well, and we populate the whole body and then the submitter deletes the whole body or meddles with it in a way that makes it completely useless. So this gives me much better hope that we'll get useful, better submissions. Excellent. Thanks, Tim. Cool. User friendly. Um, so the next step now will be we as a team should start using it for all of our requests and we need to migrate the existing Jira in issue on that one. These are the next high level tasks. I don't know if you have talked about that. I assume there are a bunch of tools for that. Yeah, I've, I've done migration before. I've done it on quite a few of my plugins. Um, I wonder if it's in my forks. Um, it's definitely and on. It's def definitely got it checked out somewhere locally. Uh, so, Tim, have you found it useful to do the migration from Jira and not just leave the leave things in Jira and work in a hybrid mode? Um, Good question. I prefer it. I just been off Jira if I can. Um, ah, okay. I found it's a lot nicer just to have one source of truth. And so if you stop people reporting, it's really annoying having people reporting new issues over in a different place. I mean, you can kind of mitigate that with whole with a whole project because with a whole project, you can stop people creating new issues. But if you're not getting rid of the old ones. Um, so I, I didn't migrate the hist I didn't migrate anything that was closed or resolved. I just migrated issues that were still open. Um, um, I have and uh, so a few other questions. The first one is you you can reference other issues from other repositories. Mm -hmm. That means, uh, so that one is Jira Infra Eldesk. Uh, it's a general question for everyone. Uh, we have the concept of Epic uh, that can be used in different ways in Jira. Uh, the Epic is like a super task that lists a bunch of tasks that are each one atomic in terms of uh, work, work item but it's a general thematic, like uh, deploy the new service, apply automation, uh, update it one time. The epic should be um, well scoped, even if it's big scope, but it's still a scope. You can close it at the moment on time. Um, and I don't know on GitHub issue, even when using projects, uh, is there a way to have this? Because in that case, I see that will be, the epic will be an issue in that repo or any repository like this one. Um, that will link all the subtasks on all the repositories. Is there uh, ways? So there's a few ways of doing it in GitHub. So there's um, there's milestones. Um, so you can group a set of issues together into a milestone. Um, and then there's also, um, yeah, so you assign them to a milestone. Um, or there's labeling for grouping the issues. Um, and then generally you have a project or a backlog. So if you go to projects, um, yeah, you, you have a, basically have a, you can have a project for that piece of work or of, as your backlog and you kind of, so you use the top one, the top one's a lot more powerful and you can create lots of different views and different people can have their own different views. Um, and you can have that at a repo level or across the organization level as well. Um, so okay. then it's kind of about, yeah, how you want to work. Um, I think labeling tends to work really well. Mm -hmm. And you can just have you can just define a top level issue as well. Mm -hmm. Top level issue with labels to link them together or 
four oh, checklists. Yes. Okay. That's cool. Okay, that should make it. I propose that we try it for the task we have right now. I assume that will involve maybe migrating a few existing at items from Jira, like the configurations code or the Terraform relative that we are working on, moving them here, seeing where we can aggregate them. And in parallel, if it's okay, then we should migrate the, the issues that are currently opened. I don't feel like that we need the closed issues. But the goal will be to try this this month. That's the proposal I'm making to see if it's a valid replacement for both our, let's say, kind of project public management and for the L desk. That should be the same thing somehow. How do you feel about that? So it's a good idea for you? Uh, we want to take that this action. So that means taking team current work and creating, a, ensuring we have a help desk and, and then go it. Harvey, you're motivated to work uh, with team on that? Cool. Thanks cool. a lot, team, for that. Absolutely cool. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you're interested in, yeah, like different types for like stories or that sort of stuff or whether just one generic issue. Uh, I don't remember. I also saw a, a link to Eclipse doing this for a bit, so I don't remember where I saw it. Does it uh, ring any bells? No? Not sure. No. Not sure. Yeah, it seems to like putting those gibberish IDs in, even though like I've set my username properly in here and it had something that wasn't my general username. Thank you very much. So let's see how it behaves, but that's really cool. That's really, really cool. <clears throat> Thanks, Tim, for all of this you have done in 10 days, uh, what we would have taken in a few weeks. So thanks very much. Are there other questions about the issue area on GitHub? Okay, let's proceed to the next topic. Um, a word about the, the issues we had during the past two weeks, three weeks, four. Um, first one, we faced network issues that started, let's say, three weeks ago, uh, middle of December. Uh, so we started to show only on the Kubernetes instances, in particular on the Jenkins agents, Kubernetes agents, a lot of TCP issues. Most of the time it was random connection being cut when um, trying to reach outside the cluster, like cloning a repository from GitHub, pulling a Docker image. Uh, there weren't exactly one kind of domain or IP class of IP that was, uh, it was completely random. So uh, Hervé and I, we checked the Azure console and we saw some alerts from Azure UI about, um, so that, that, that was a topic we presented two weeks ago. We had, we have IP overlap. These alerts have been raised since one year and a half on uh, the Azure cluster. We have IP overlap on different uh, features of the current Kubernetes cluster. So after digging the documentation, uh, we don't have any other solution than creating a new cluster. We cannot change the IP uh, area, uh, which is overlapping with our virtual network uh, without creating a new cluster. That means, uh, as we said two weeks ago, but I want to restate that, that will be the next major task for us. That's a great opportunity to split the existing cluster named prod public gates in two new cluster, private gates and public gates. The public one will host the services that are public facing and the private one should be on a private network, only available through VPN, in order to, to have more safety around the Jenkins instance, such as Infra CI or Release CI with sensitive credential. They will be on a physically separated network. That's a work that wasn't done, but that work is a, will be an implementation of the IEP in, uh, from Tyler, the IEP2 because in fact it wasn't implemented correctly. And that one described to at least network production. 
it's not the development network that one could be raised in the future for the, let's say, uh, uh, what's the name, pull request instances for the developer of application like plugin Jenkins that run on public. But right now we are on using correctly VPN with the private production network. So that means we will have to create a brand new private production, migrate everything that should run on this, such as infra CI, which is already done, but really CI, Grafana as much, and then create a new public production and migrate everything on this one. We have to expect an outage on some services. The main one will be LDAP because we will have to migrate a stateful application LDAP from the current buggy cluster to the new public one when it will be created. So I mean, it should, only be, it should only be a couple of seconds. It's just a DNS swap, isn't it? Uh, it might not even yes. be an outage. Yes. Uh, Depending on how you do yeah. it. Yeah, we will have to stop the application that can write in LDAP though. But yeah, if we do it correctly, yeah. we should avoid the LDAP. Uh, yeah, it sure. might be even faster than restarting the pod, right? But that's, that's the next steps and we have to put this as high priority because um, the reason, uh, thanks to team research and knowledge sharing, uh, the reason why it started to appear middle of December is because uh, uh, Microsoft has rolled out a new network infrastructure system. So it has been confirmed that uh, we are not alone having this issue. And any alerts that was raised since months or years uh, started to have a, a meaning, which means IP overlaps means the packets weren't put it correctly. If, so we, could we raise a support ticket and get them to roll it back? <laughs> we, I don't think they could, given the size of the change, but yeah, maybe. Uh, no, I mean, so they, they paused, so they, they were doing an incremental rollout to customers oh, and they oh, um, I didn't know and they paused that. the rollout partway through December um, because they didn't want to hit any more issues around Christmas time because people were going on holiday. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you could ask them to roll it back. Well, I mean, sure, we can fix this, but it'd be nice if they could <laughs> undo um, it for now. For, for, I think, yeah, that's worth it opening a support ticket. Uh, I'm not sure it's really an issue in the sense that by moving infra CI out of the existing cluster, we don't see TCP issue anymore, mainly because the, the IP overlapped was caused by the additional IPs requ requested for each external request made from the Kubernetes agent. So we are just back on below the threshold. So if we start migrating other services, we should be okay. Wouldn't we hit it on release.ci as well? Uh, no, it, um, I, I wanted to experiment and fix all issues on infra CI before. And because we have to fix the next, the next one before uh, operating. I mean, won't, won't we have the same issue with release.ci or is it just that we have less jobs running there? Oh, we had the issue until we stopped uh, the increased activity on infra CI. So now we uh, both are, are are working as expected. So it's a kind of equilibrium we have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess it'll work. But... Um, so, see notes and plan from last meeting. I'm, I'm wondering whether that's related to, because even when we swapped the new cluster, we have these Azure API issues where the container step doesn't work properly. Yeah whether it's related that's, to the same thing, because the new cluster will have that as well. Exactly, probably. so that, that's the second issue. Um, it appears that uh, when you have an AKS cluster, there are, there are issues when using side containers uh, with the Kubernetes agent plugins. So that has been, it, it, it's not confirmed by the developers, but there are people at least at CloudBees that are working on that since this morning. Uh, it has been acknowledged by another user than us on a public uh, issue. So now there is an engineering effort from different contributors okay, to work on that part. That's, that's good because I mean it, it might be something to raise with Microsoft as well, but um, I guess they can do that if they've got some Microsoft contracts somewhere. Yeah. Um, so just for information, I've put a bunch of nod about the cluster and the Kubernetes issue. Um, on Akemd, I've added the link on today's notes. 
because until yesterday morning, we weren't uh, sure, except maybe Tim, because <laughs> you were in advance with the analysis, but we weren't sure that the two issues weren't, weren't the same. These are two separated issues. And the Jenkins Kubernetes issues, since it was uh, spamming the AKS control plane of a bunch of requests for kubectl exec to the agents, it was adding more load to the network, catalyzing the network issue two weeks ago. But these are totally uh, decorrelated because the new temporary cluster where InfraCI is living as for today has the second issue, but not the first one. Um, and the latest Kubernetes plugin. So in order to in order to have everything working for InfraCI, we did a bunch of work yesterday and today uh, with Team RV uh, Gavin. We switched from a pod agent with multiple container to single container model. That means we had to rebuild and upgrade all of our Docker images to inherit from GDK which was quite a huge work. So thanks everyone involved on in that because that was, let's say annoying, not complicated, but annoying. Getting all images. So thanks a lot for that. There are still some areas that we need to finish. Uh, the Terraform management part, Hervé is working on that. And Tim, I don't know if Gavin or you started to use the new Node.js GNLP image or not. On, on the plugins and Jenkins at your website? I assume Gavin will when he wakes, when he gets back to it, but um, it'll only fix the plugin sites, um, the changes we did. Um, the annoying thing is that Jenkins.io uses a really old version of Ruby um, and it's not, that version of Ruby is not available in um, Alpine's repositories. Um, Okay, so we might not we might need to define new images for that, but the rule is all images must inherit from um, inbound agent, either Debian, Windows, or Alpine. Uh, you can choose. We don't mind Debian or Alpine. That's the same result. It's just that this image must have the default tools, default user Jenkins, and default entry point with the Jenkins agent script, so that Jenkins controller can start the pod with this one. Yeah, I'm really hoping that Gavin does his get Spirit right and finishes it because it's really annoying having to use old versions of Ruby hmm. and it just, it just doesn't work on the new stuff and the well struct isn't really maintained anymore, like the tool, the tooling that it's using. I wonder if we cannot reuse the Ruby used for Puppet because it's also an older one and I'm sure it will, it will be the same. I, m I might need to help uh, yeah, because maybe, it, maybe it might work out of the box. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's probably, you could probably install like a Ruby package manager or something which installs it, but it's yeah, certainly, but... Not, certainly not available in the repositories. I had a look, it's all three plus. <clears throat> okay, so that's work in progress, but now uh, we have a bunch of workloads and we haven't seen uh, any WebSocket timeout issue since on these jobs. So uh, thanks very much for uh, involved in that because that was not uh, the best way to start the year. Uh, the third issue is just a special thank to Olivier uh, uh, because Olivier and I tried to update update CLI on some elements and we everything started to to break and we have a bunch of failed jobs so that should uh, be fixed by updating to the latest uh, 017. That one was quite annoying as well because it was stopping our ability to update often as well and the free the combination of the three issues led to the fourth topic incremental updates was not updated in plugin since a few days if i understand or it was not working uh, i might need a mark who team described the issue because i'm not sure i understand I, at all the incremental stuff so i need help it was i, I mean jesse made a change a week ago and it didn't get deployed mostly oh. because mostly because of builds being broken because of the um network issues okay that wasn't okay. Yeah, I, now I understand the words you're using. I can tell you the story if the story helps. Uh, yes. 
if you if you don't care about the story, I'll tell you about it. I can tell you later, or whatever. It's just yeah, I it, care. It, but it's a fascinating really. story, but but it's it maybe is not here. It's the the infra breakage meant we didn't deploy a particular image, and that image was needed because other changes were needed in how Jenkins plugin incremental deployments work. So when I de deliver a new pull request, I automatically get a build of that pull request that I can use in a plugins.txt file. And it's really elegant. It's very, very powerful. It lets me evaluate betas with code, um, pre-releases with code. But that was broken because we had to break it. Jesse had to break it due to some novel and interesting behaviors in Apache Maven. And let's call that enough. That that's enough description. I can tell you a much longer story some other time. Yeah. The, the other bit is Shawan. The other bit is the one with the Shawan with underscore and everything. Yeah. 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 Rand will be detects letters and marks it and thinks it's a beta when it's not, because it finds a B and B in your commit string. Um, but yeah, the other thing is that I think. It's just, it's just it was basically a drive by PR. I don't think he's actually tested it fully, so we just need to see whether it works. So it may not actually fix the issue, but it's yeah. a drive by PR that will hopefully work. Okay, but okay, that makes more sense between team uh, explanation and IRC and yours, Mark. Now I, I start to understand better that area. Uh, I was close to zero knowledge on this area, so good to learn. Cool. Um, since it's uh, we are ten minutes past the limit of the meeting, I propose that we uh, delay the other topics that are, let's say, less important to the next team meeting, unless there is one you want to bring right now. One, two, three. Okay. So I'm gonna stop the recording.